Hi, Judy. Should we go? Okay. Welcome everybody to Let's Make Art. We are here. We're painting this gorgeous Sunset Mountain landscape. Lovely. Ooh and ah. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. ah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm so excited you guys are here. I love painting with you guys every week. Remember that you can ask questions, comments along the way. I'll answer them as we go. Um, we're just going to introduce everybody. We have my lovely husband here. His name's Michael Cray. Hello. And this is my mom, actually. She's in town, and her name's Kelly, so she's painting with us tonight. And we actually have Jake doing camera work back there. Say, say hi, Jake. Don't blame, don't blame me. <laughs> <laughs> if anything goes wrong, Jake's who you gotta talk to. Anyways, so excited to be here with you I'm tonight. taking my shoes off. <laughs> okay. Okay. Do it. Getting comfortable. Whatever, let's get comfortable here. If you're at home, take off your shoes, you know? Put on your comfy pants. Let's let's get comfortable. So we have five colors here tonight, and um, I'm just gonna start putting them on my palette here. Show what we're painting. I we did we did oh. an odd. Oh yeah, Ooh, I remember. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> that happened like three seconds ago. Okay, so uh, our first color that we're using is sunshine yellow. That's the top part of our um, sky that we're putting in here. And um, then we're going to put in some sunrise pink, which is this really lovely soft pink. To the oath. <clears throat> oh, we will, we will get there. I'm just good at this now. So I know. Bossy. You got to let me, this is what I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Comes in here telling me how to run things. So I'm just putting um, paint. I kind of like just to go around the edge of my palette a couple inches. Um, space so we can mix colors and play with things like that. Here, oh, ooh, I'm getting low on Norway. Now, if you're using from our kit, then you can just take a paintbrush to get some of this paint out instead of having to dump the whole thing because I know we give you a lot of paint. You don't usually use all of that for the painting, so you can just use a little paintbrush. Okay. Uh, Cherry's here. Hi, Cherry. Debbie, Ginger, welcome everybody. Hello. Hello, hello. Okay, we are going to start with our oath. Okay, so everybody raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise to be patient with myself. I promise, I promise to, be to be patient, patient with, with myself. myself. I promise not to compare. I promise, I promise not, to, not compare. to compare. And I promise to have fun. I promise, and I to, have promise fun. to have fun. Thank you. Because sometimes when we first start painting, especially if we're not you know, used to it all the time, we get kind of nervous and anxious and we compare our work and we have to remember everybody starts somewhere, everybody paints differently, everybody has different styles and we embrace that here. We love it. We love all the different things. That's why we have multiple people painting. That's why I want you to share your paintings so people can see it doesn't have to be exactly this way every single time. So for our brushes here, we're using a round six and a round two, but if you have a round 10 or a larger brush, I would recommend using this for this project as well. I did use a round six to paint this, but larger brushes are just easier to fill in a space. And since we're doing large spaces like the sky and the mountains, it might be easier with a bigger brush. So if you have a round 10, go ahead and pull that out and use it. Okay, let's start with our warm ups here. Get a brush. Which one? Anyone you want. Anyone you feel comfortable painting with. Usually I go for like a medium or a larger brush, but I like to paint big. That's me. Okay. So go ahead and get your brush wet and you should have a couple pieces of paper and your paper actually has like a smoother side and a little bit more textured side. Um, try and paint on the textured side. Um, it just absorbs the water better. Okay. So the first thing that I want you guys to practice is we are going to do an ombre, but not just with dark to light. We're going to do it from one color to another color. So uh, let's start with our um, yellow. Or you can do like the dark pink if you want and then transition to blue. I'll, I'll show you how to do that too. Um, so I want you to grab the yellow and start just going across your page. Just like that. And then kind of rinse your brush and grab this really light pink. 
and kind of like halfway from where you left off to where that yellow is, I want you to start and then work it across. Now, after you've started it, we kind of have this harsh line right here, right where it started, right? So I like to take a damp brush, brush and kind of work, work that, that back, back and forth, forth so, so it's a smoother, smoother transition. transition. So our goal here is to go from like a yellow to almost like an orange where that yellow and pink meet to strong pink at the end. If you have to add another little brush of pink at the end to make it nice and strong, go ahead and do that. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, gorgeous. So we want this color transition from yellow to orange to pink. Because if you look at skies, especially at like sunsets or sunrises, is there's a really smooth transition of color across the sky. And that's what we're trying to communicate with the sunset that we're painting tonight. We're gonna do that one more time, but let's do that using a little bit darker color. We're gonna use the moss rose. We're gonna start there. Do I dry off in between or no? Um, Doesn't matter. I like to, I don't, I don't like to totally dry off, but I like to like dampen my brush a little bit so it's not like dripping wet. Okay. okay, so, or you can just like tap the side of your glass to get that excess water off. That's something I do too. So I'm gonna start with my moss, pink, moss rose actually is what it's called. And then I'm just gonna kind of go across. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of Norway blue start kind of halfway where that pink is and then go back and blend out that middle just with the damp brush. So the goal here is not to have a super strong line of where the color starts. Now this is still a pretty strong line from where the pink and the purple starts. So I'm going to take my damp brush and kind of smooth that over one more time. Kind of work that back. That look all right? Yeah. So I would even lift some of this color out here okay. and lighten that up. And you, there's a lot of water on it. Don't be afraid to dampen your, to dry off your brush a little bit. Hi, Jen. Welcome. Hey, Evan's watching. Evan, Evan Cornell. Cornell. Hi, Evan. Hi, Evan. I hope you got ball pythons eventually. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to put in one more dash of blue at the end so it's nice and strong. So the goal here is a nice pink to purple to blue. And we don't want super strong lines from where they transition. The key for me, when there's like a, a, a strong line between two colors, I really just take, I rinse my brush so it's clean. I kind of dry it off and then I just um, kind of work back and forth across that line to smooth it out. Oh my gosh. Ah. Okay, that's okay. I made a mistake. So Michael started moving his, it was looking good, but he put a little too strong blue over here. You can lift color out. Can they see that on the, yep. just take your paintbrush, lift it out. So we lifted that strong blue out and then now you can work it back and forth. You're a hero. I'm a hero among men. Okay, beautiful. Yep. I kind of really love the color of my water right now. It's, it's great. Yeah. Did I that. like the color of my water. I did that on purpose. I actually really like what's going on right here. Next week's These tutorial. These are gorgeous colors. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The next thing that we are going to practice is we are going to practice even washes. So a wash is just when you're laying paint and water down simultaneously. So at the same time you have paint and water on your brush and you're laying it down. And even just means it's even valued. So there's not one side that's darker or one side that's lighter. It's the same level of light or dark in that area. So we want to do, bless you, we want to do a light value, a, a medium value and a dark value. So I'm going to start with my light value first. And to get it lighter, you're just going to use more water on your brush and less paint. So I have my brush, it's filled with water. I'm going to grab just a little bit of paint and I'm just going to make a little square down here. See how that's like barely there? Yeah. And you kind of just work it back and forth to get that even feel. Yeah. 
that might be a little bit too dark. You can probably, that could be your medium value. And I would just rinse your brush, brush and have that be your light value. Yeah, don't pick up any more paint. Yep. So I have my light. Now I'm gonna go with my medium. That just means I'm gonna pick up a little bit more paint here. So here's a medium. And I'm working it back and forth because then if you work it back and forth, then that color is gonna spread across the water. Just like that. Evan says he's only watching for you. Thank <laughs> yeah, good job. Okay, and then in the next one we wanna do is dark. So this one we're gonna have more paint than water. Uh, usually I like, I call it load. Like I fill up the belly of my brush with paint, which basically means I just like stir my brush in it a lot and pick up a lot. And this is my dark value. So what you wanna make sure when you're doing these values is that there is a clear difference between all three of them. That's all it is. Yep, great. And there's like dark spots, will they like even out? Or yeah. will it just kinda of dark stay? It kind of should kinda of even out a little bit, especially if it's nice and wet. I mean, there, because this paper is textured, there's gonna be little divots of where it kinda of accumulates color. That's fine, as long as it's, what we don't want is we don't want it to be like this. Gotcha, okay. So you see how within this square there is an extreme change in value from dark to light. That's okay in some parts of the painting, but for this project, we don't want that because we want our mountains here. These are even washes here, these three, and there's a light, medium, and a dark. So um, that's what we're going for. That's what we're practicing. Also, my blue is not nearly as dark as either of yours. Is it because my brush was wetter? It could be that you had more water in your brush. So you could always, so here's his dark value. Oh. You can always do another layer and darken it up. With watercolor, you can always add more to it. So sometimes it's good to go a little bit, you know, light at first and then you can always just add on it to make it darker. Okay. We're gonna practice, actually we're gonna wait. We're gonna wait to practice that because uh, we have drying time in between our mountains, so. So keep your um, scratch paper handy because we'll work on that as things dry. Now for this painting, um, I just used a plate. I just used a circle plate to trace my circle. You guys can do any shape you want. And then um, because we're doing skies and even washes, there's a little bit more water in this than most other projects. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna tape the bottom of mine down, the bottom part of my paper, because this, this paper, um, I, I like to use it, but when you use a lot of water on it because it's not like the highest quality, it starts to curl and bend. So to do that, to avoid that while you're painting, is just put some painter's tape down on the edges and then after it's dry, you can take the tape okay. off. So why don't you should go ahead and- take it off? It's already loose or should I, oh. should I leave it on there? I would leave it on there. Okay. If you're using a pad, I like to leave the paper on the pad that I'm painting with because one side is already glued down, right? It's glued down to like the spine of the pad. So you can do that. Oh, that is cool. Phoebe's on and she says it's her first time watching live. Hi Phoebe. Hi Phoebe. Thank you for being with us. We're so excited to have you. Take your shoes off, it feels better. <laughs> Take your shoes off and get comfortable. Okay, I need to tape. you need to tape yours down. So what we're gonna start with here, oh, I probably should have gotten more than one pencil. Um, this isn't even a pencil, this is a colored pencil, but I'm gonna lightly draw in our mountains. So um, if you wanna do this, using like a paintbrush and like the lightest bit of color, you can do that. Or if you wanna use a pencil, just kinda lightly put it in. I, I think I'll actually use a paintbrush with a little bit, um, with a really light wash, so it's barely there. And I'm gonna draw in my first mountain here. Now this mountain is going to be like two thirds up on my circle and it's kinda just gonna go across. 
and I have some like bumps along the way. Now this is where you can make your mountains yours, okay? It doesn't have to follow mine exactly. Um, it can kind of do its own thing if you want. Maybe you don't like the lumpiness of my mountains, then you can make yours totally different. Somebody said they ripped the top of the paper off with their painter's tape. They are wondering maybe their, oh. maybe their tape was too strong. Yeah, maybe the, the tape was too strong. Usually painter's tape is really gentle though. That's what I've used. Um, if you've noticed that it happens again with yours, a good thing that you can do is you can kind of like take your painter's tape and just go across your clothes a couple of times so it picks up some fuzzies so it's not as sticky. Okay, and then I'm gonna draw in my second mountain. This one is gonna kinda have more of a dip and then it goes back up. And then it kind of goes off a little bit. And you can also adjust these. Like I'm like, you know what, maybe I want that to be higher. I'm going to make that higher right there. And then my third mountain that I'm doing, this one is just kind of coming across kind of this way. So it's going to like do this. It's going to run into the other mountain and go up. Yep. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so now that we have our mountains in place, we can put in our sky. So what we're gonna start with, I'm actually, I'm gonna test my water. If your water is super dark with color from the warmups and like, I'm gonna take my scratch paper and just do a couple water lines with a clean brush. Mine actually doesn't have a color so I'm just gonna use this, but if yours has a color, you might wanna uh, wash it out really quick because we're gonna put in yellow, and yellow's a really light color, and it will mix with that blue. Mine does. Your does? Okay, go take it, rinse it out. Okay, so we're gonna start with putting in our yellow first, so the very top part of our circle is gonna be just this yellow here. So I'm taking my brush, I'm grabbing sunshine yellow and I'm just going to kind of go across the top of my paper here. I'm going to follow the shape of this circle. Just like that. And then just using water I'm going to spread all of this kind of yellow almost down to the mountains. Now one thing you have to remember with a sky is you usually wanna work while it's still wet because it will blend better. So basically, you just gotta work fast. So I put, in my, I put in my yellow, it's nice and wet. And now I'm gonna kinda mix a little bit of this light pink with the yellow. So it makes like this orange. And I'm not gonna go to the very top because I want this strong yellow peeking throughout the top. I'm gonna go probably like an inch down and start putting in some orange. This one right here? Yeah. What is it called? That is the, um, no, that is Sunrise Pink. So I'm just gonna start putting in some of this orange. And if it's wet, it should kinda spread out evenly. If you have to rehydrate your area um, because um, it dried too fast, you're welcome to do that. I'm gonna add a little bit of water on mine right now. So it kind of spreads easier. Which one is the sunrise pink? The really light okay. pink is the sunrise All right. pink. All right. And now I'm, so that color I just put in was a mixture of the sunrise pink and the light yellow. Now I'm gonna take just pure sunrise pink and just start dropping that in, I'll, like right underneath the orange. Now you're gonna get these really interesting textures because it, what, it's wet like it's kind of like fuzzy almost, where it's kind of bleeding out. Um, I think those are really cool in watercolor, so I'm not gonna mess with those too much. But if they're bothering you and you wanna get rid of them, just take a damp brush and kind of smoosh, smoosh, <laughs> smoosh over them. Is that a Jersey Shores term? <laughs> it is. Smoosh. Smoosh. Snooky sister. <laughs> Snooky sister, smoosh. Now, when you are adding these colors, 
um, you might have the urge to like keep moving your brush up all the way across the sky. Try not to do that because it will mess with this like bright yellow we have at the top and we kind of want to keep that. So kind of stay within like the smaller areas if you can. Okay, now we're gonna add some of our moss rose. So I have, so your, your sky should be like a soft yellow, orange, kind of a pink now. Yours might be stronger in color in some areas. Those are things that I think that we should embrace because it's a sky, they're crazy different colors. Yeah, so now kind of where I left off with this like rosy pink, I'm gonna start putting in a little bit of moss. Now, I'm not going too crazy with this color because it's a super vibrant color. So it's more like, um, like a soft wash. I already went up. That's okay, crazy. embrace it, embrace <laughs> it, go with it. Because that's really cool. So I would just go with that. And I'm actually gonna do a touch of like this really saturated color here and there. To lighten it so it's not so strong, you just add water to it. And kind of, now remember not to go all the way up your paper when you're smearing this out because then that's going to kind of go over the beautiful transitions that we already put in. Yeah. Okay, one thing I want you guys to be aware of, and this is what you're going to want to do, is your mountain outline, you're going to want to outline it, right? But what you want, you have to keep in mind when you're doing landscape, is the sky is independent from the mountains, right? It transitions on its own without the mountains. Does that make sense? So if you are outlining the mountains in all of the colors and it follows that horizon line, then the sky is not gonna look like it's farther apart. Does that make sense? So like the sky transitions without the mountains there. So we have to paint the sky as if the mountains weren't there. So to, let me show you what I'm talking about. So if the sky were to keep going, right? If the mountains weren't here, I would make it transition to like a purple and then a blue. So I'm gonna add some purple in there by mixing a little bit of my um, moss rose with blue. And when I add my purple, I'm not gonna go across the outline of my mountains. I'm gonna just do it in like the divots where my mountains are lower because that's where the trans that's where you would see the transition. Am I explaining that? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't follow the topography of the mountains. Don't follow the topography of the mountains because the sky is transitioning on its own from it. Okay. So like so if you see here if I were to take my purple and outline all of these mountains, then it would almost look like it wouldn't look like a sky because I'm working around the mountains. Okay. But if you go out in nature and you see a mountainscape with the sky behind it, the colors don't work on top of the mountains. It works behind it and the mountains just stand in front of it. Okay. So I'm putting my blues and my purples. So if my mountains were gone, I would just have a smooth transition of color. I hope that's making sense. Everybody's commenting in like, yeah, perfect sense. Okay, that's great. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. He's making that up. <laughs> <laughs> I go back to look and there's nothing. Everyone's like, I'm confused. I'm so confused. <laughs> I hate this. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're doing skies. I know that your mind is thinking, I'm gonna follow the outline of these mountains, but you have to keep in mind they're independent from each other. The mountains just get in the way of the sky. So that's why we just do little touches of color, like where the mountains go down, because that's the sky that we see. I know my pink got like way too strong, but I love how it like tree branched out so yeah I just left it. leave it yeah it's super cool that happened on my mom's too and i'm loving it so i should go more blue down so the here, blues or... and the purples so i went a little bit strong on that that's okay i'm gonna just yeah. move yours yeah. so here we have um so the blues and the purples you want to stay where your mountains are low you're not going to want to do it on top okay. of your mountains okay. because we're not we don't see that part of okay. the sky yet all right so just kind of in these little divots here 
So over here we would want to add it because our mountain line is low on that side. So we can add a little blue here and blue down here. We wouldn't want to do it on the top part. Okay. Because that's not where the color transitions in the sky. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. And for me, I love this like punch of color I have on this right side. I feel like I didn't get that on the left. So I'm just gonna kind of like, there's blue on my brush, but I'm just gonna kind of put in a little bit of pink on this side because I want that side to be colorful too. Just like that. Okay, how are you guys feeling about your sky? Yeah, I like it. I like it. Yeah, it's looking really good. I don't really want to smooth, I don't really want to smooth that. Uh, yeah, we can do a check-in because we have to wait for it to dry. Should I just move it to the center here? Okay. Mine will drip, be careful with her. I'll be so <laughs> careful with her. Okay. So here's Michael's sky. We have a nice strong yellow top here. He's saying that he likes how his pink is... What? You like it. I hate it, but he's saying... Did I drip it? No, you're fine. Okay. Just Jake, kidding. you freaked me out. Just a little bit. So he, has, he does have a strong line here, but he's digging it. And if you like it, then do what you want to do. Um, if you don't like strong color, like the strong line here, take your damp brush, spread it out. But if you love it, then leave it. There's... You're making me nervous with that brush. You put that down. I'm, I'm not going to touch it. I won't touch it. <laughs> And then we have the touches of the dark color here. That looks really nice. If you want, you can kind of move that one up a little bit more if you want and let that kind of spread. But besides that, it's looking really good. Well, thank you. It looks great, dear. Okay, mom. Okay, so here is my mom's. She has some great... Yeah. Good? Yeah, it's working pan a little bit. Wait, what? Your other pan. Do this that way. one over, here. over that way. Oh, this way. There you go. There you go. Okay. So she has some really strong color here, but I actually really love how this kind of bled out and tree branched out. Isn't that what you called it? Yeah. I think it looks really great. So if you love that, yeah. then I don't like leave it. that. I like it. Um, the little hints of purple and blue down here are beautiful. That looks great. And this transition is really nice. I like how strong both of your skies are. It's beautiful. And then... Um, and this is the fun thing, I think, with sunsets and skies is um, they're all going to look different. And that's okay. We embrace that. We love it. We celebrate it. Okay. Um, so how I added, Raven's asking how I added the blues and the purples again. I started by putting in my moss rose and kind of blending that out. And then I just did, I kind of mixed all my palette, this purple color between the Norway blue and the moss rose. And I kind of like just kind of started at the bottom of the... Oh yeah. Here is the moss rose. Here's the Norway blue. I kind of just mixed a little right here in the middle so it's a soft purple. And I just kind of started adding it in like where my mountain um, scape goes low. What would that be? Like the valleys of it? Yes. Um, you kind of put in your purple and then I like took a damp brush and just blended those out a little bit. Just like that. And then if you want to do like a touch of blue at the very bottom on some of these, go for it. Okay. So you're going to have to wait a while because we're going to add in our last mountainscape, right? The top mountain. We're going to put that in, but you want to make sure that your sky is totally dry before you put that in because we're going to do a wet wash and we want the lines to be sharp. So if we started putting in a blue wash in here, it would touch that. They would spread and smear. It's not the end of the world. We just want to try and avoid it. So, uh, let me, so can we do the bottom one now? Okay. This is an excellent question because Al asked me the same thing. When you're doing mountainscapes or just landscapes in general, you usually want to start from the farthest ground first and work your way up because it's easier to paint in front of something. It gives it more the illusion that something is actually in front of something. So if I were to paint this first and then try and paint this one and then try and paint this one, 
um, then what's painted in front can get kind of lost. Like I could have a brush stroke that actually goes, you know, accidentally in front of that and that would then kill the illusion that that's farther away. So I've always been taught to just work your way back, start back and work your way forward. It's easier. So what we can do if your mountainscape is not dry, mine's almost dry, but not quite there yet, is we can practice our trees. So go ahead and grab your scratch paper. I'm just this going to, awesome. I know, I'm so in love with this color change right here. It reminds me of um, Lisa Frank, right? You might not know. It reminds me of like 80s nylon workout pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Debbie commented on my painted hands. I should, <laughs> I should have addressed this. I was, subscriptions are coming out this week. I've been mailing orders. And so all those little bottles of paint you guys get, I fill them for you. So that is why my hands are totally covered in paint. I did a little bit. I have one tiny. <laughs> he was helping me too. Okay. So go ahead and grab your round two brush and uh, we're gonna practice our trees. Now when you do trees, I like to use smaller brushes because I like thin lines. I'm a thin line type of gal. And I'm gonna start by drawing my trunk first. So to practice a thin line, it's all about pressure. So like this first warm up we're gonna do, I just want you guys to practice drawing vertical lines. So lines that go up and down and try and get them as thin as you can. So I'm like almost barely touching my brush to my paper. And if they get a little shaky, that's not a big deal. If you like skip a section, that's not a huge deal either. I watch you a lot. Yeah. I kind of like you or whatever. Okay. You always go bottom to top. Is there any reason for that? Because I'm more comfortable like pulling towards myself. It is totally preference. Some artists or painters are more comfortable pulling towards them. I'm more comfortable pulling away from me. Would that be pulling? Pushing? Pushing. So for me, I like to push up and away. But if you do that and you're like, this feels wrong, I wanna do it the other way, do it the other way. I, I don't think it makes a difference. Also, do you use your fingers as like a rest when you do it? Or are you touching the paper at all? Um, it depends. If my paper is wet, I'm not touching the paper at all. Um, but if it's dry, like this is dry, I'm, I'm like gently resting the right part of my hand, your palm, my palm on the paper and I'm just kind of moving it up. Now you don't want to like lay down your wrist and then try and do it because then your length of your line is limited. So if I put my wrist down and planted it and like put all my weight on that and then try to do a thin line, one, it's going to curve because that's the way my wrist moves. And two, like that's how long I can go, right? But if I pick up my wrist to where it's barely grazing the paper, I can go as long as I need to. I can do like from top to bottom. So I just want you to feel comfortable doing these thin lines because I use this in so much of my work, especially if you're doing like florals or leaves, like this is how I do all of my stems. And if it's easier for you to start at the top and pull down, go for it. So the colors that we're using for the trees, they're just going to be black. Somebody asked me on Facebook. That's why I <laughs> just said that. You're like, where did that come from? Okay. We got a Puerto Rico in the house. Where did oh, Puerto Rico? Oh, welcome. Awesome. Okay. So for our trees, we do our trunk first. And then after we do our trunk, so if this is my trunk for my tree, just like that. It's a good trunk. Thank you. It's really great. Basically what you want to make sure is your tree is this shape or this shape without having to draw that outline. The other thing you want to be aware of is this is the other thing when we think of trees. We want to do this. Right? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I want to do that. You're going to want to do that. Don't do that. What you have to think of is you have to remember with trees is there's branches and it's almost like it's in sections. So the reason why this doesn't work, 
very well is because if you look at the silhouette of a trees, trees are made up of branches and tiny little leaves, right? And so light actually goes in between those sections. It's not just completely solid most of the time. So we want to make sure that we show that there is space in between those leaves and branches. So I'm gonna start at the top and usually I just use like my two and I do dash marks like this, okay? And I'm gonna start at the top and I'm just gonna start with smaller dash marks. And then I'm gonna kinda of like do a branch, like work your way across for branches. Okay, this is me putting in my branches. And you'll see as I go, go down the trunk, my branches get a little bit wider. So if you look at the shape of my tree, if I were to outline it, it would still be this triangle shape, like that, okay? After I put in my branches, I just follow along the branches that I put in and I just do these dash marks and I follow the branches. So it's just gonna be kind of dashes here. And then I also do little dashes across the main trunk so it's not like a, a thin skinny line. You still wanna put a little bit of texture on there. So I'm kind of just like making my way and then I just kind of go across. And my dashes are kind of going in multiple directions, right? They're not all doing this. Some of them go up, some of them go down, some of them go across because we want that like prickly feeling, right? That some trees have where like there are leaves going in every direction. Yeah, that looks good. Mine are bad. No, yours aren't bad. Just keep on going. It looks like I'm trying to write in Japanese. <laughs> I'm not doing very well. Well, if it's looking too chaotic for you and you don't like it, try having your, your dashes going in the same direction. See if that helps. Like I'm, yours looks like it has like nice bushiness. Like I'm fully aware that mine is like a stick with like some markings on it. Okay. So what could be going on here is that your branches, see how they're super thick on the ends? We want them to be thicker in the middle, like closer to the trunk, mm -hmm. and then get a little bit thinner as they go out. Makes sense. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be, here's a little thick, and then it like, it kind of flitters away. Oh, you don't have the whole trunk coated either, I'm looking, I thought I had to like. No, I kind of go in between the trunks too, a little bit. Rip the trunk in a sweater. But you can be a little bit more random with those trunk pieces. <laughs> You're good at this. Thank you. You should do this. I should do this for like a job or something? Okay. That looks great. Okay. We're gonna take a break and we're gonna go back to this because we need to put in our first mountain. And we have dry time in between each layer, so don't worry, we're not done on the trees. We're just gonna put in our last mountain. Okay. So for this last mountain that I'm putting in, this is gonna be our lightest layer. So we wanna make sure it's light, but we don't want it too light. Because here's the funny thing with doing landscapes. You want the background to be light, but you don't want it to be like so bright that it's creating a contrast. Does that make sense? Because things far away aren't contrasty. They're kind of, they kind of even out in value and kind of get duller in color and kind of lighten up just a little bit. But if they're so bright, they'll jump to the foreground visually. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of my Norway blue with black. So I get kind of like this navy, but if you like um, like a super bright blue, then don't mix it with black. I'm just gonna mix it a little bit here. And then I'm just gonna start working on my mountains and remember, make sure that your sky is dry. And sometimes it's easier to do an even value if the whole thing is kind of wet. So I, I put in my color and then I'm just taking water at this point and kind of getting the whole thing wet. And then I'm gonna go back in and drop in the color. Now what you wanna keep in mind here is if it's too wet and your sky is still kind of wet and it touches, your sky is gonna bleed. So just kind of keep that in mind. Okay, so now that my mountains are wet. Sarah, I flicked a little dot of blue in my sky. Do I Just take towel? a paper towel and lift it up. It might just be, it might just be there. And it, it's okay. As you can see with my original, 
I dropped my black paintbrush when I was totally done. I thought they were birds. <laughs> and I just left it. Okay. So is this too dark? No, I don't think that's too dark. You just have to, basically this first color is gonna inform you how dark the other mountain should be. That's all it is. So you just have to make sure that this is the lightest one. Do I want to get rid of all of the white space between the sky? And yes, the you want to make sure there is no white space. And basically, we're just trying to even out this value. So this side is kind of darker. I'm going to try and make the entire mountain that same value. And that's basically just working it back and forth, taking that paintbrush over the wet areas and moving that paint across it to where it just evens out. Now, um, there can be a slight value change. Uh, basically, we want the top of the mountains to be dark, darker, but not like super dark. We don't want to outline. And then it can get a little bit light as it touches the bottom. So if you look at my example here, see how this top part is a little bit darker than this bottom part? There's a slight value change. Do you look at it? Do you see it? I see it. You see it? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's okay to do. If you want it to get a little bit lighter as you go down, that's fine. That happens. But we, we just want to make sure we have it mostly even and that the top part is really defined. So I'm going to add a little bit more color to my top part and then blend it out because I just want it to be strong against my sky. Yep. Should I add a little darker up at the top? I would do a little darker at the top, but that's a really good even wash. That looks great. Yeah, and now you're going to want to blend that out. But when you, you, the other thing you have to remember with watercolor is you just have to work fast, which I know it's hard, especially if you're, you know, just starting something, but with, it's really important to be able to, since we're doing even washes and blending, it's really important that we work while it's still wet. If you wait too long and you put like a dark outline in and you wait too long to blend it out, no amount of blending is going to get out that strong line. So just try and work fast if you can. Okay, and what if it's going, if it's meeting and going over a little bit of the sky? If it's going over a little bit of the sky, that's okay, because the mountain is in front of the sky, okay. so that's fine. And if you even want to, I might even, I feel like my, um, my silhouette here, like, is really smooth. I don't know why it's bothering me. I'm just going to add a few, like, angles to my mountains so they're not super smooth just to give it a little bit of texture so this is why working with a round 10 might be a little bit easier because we're really just trying to care to cover a large amount of area in a short amount of time. That's why big brushes are nicer to use in those circumstances. Just like that. So I added just a little bit of uh, jaggedness. Is that a word? Oh yeah. 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 Jaggedness to my, to my mountain. So desert island, right? You're stranded. Yeah, yeah. You stranded with a big brush or a little brush? You're trying with a 10 or a 2. <laughs> I'm trying with a 10. Me too, babe. Okay, let me tell you. <laughs> let, me, <laughs> let me tell you why I would like that. Because with rounds, and this is why they're so absolutely wonderful, I have a big round here. It's got a big body, but it has a nice narrow tip. So I can still do thin, long lines with my 10. I'll show you that right now. So this is my 10. Wow, you don't Thank even you. need it to. <laughs> oh, damn, girl. So this is why I like rounds because I can do a thick line or I can do a nice thin or thinner or thinner. Let's see how thin I can go. 
Oh. Okay. You turn twos into tens. That's why. That was me that's showing why up. Work well. <laughs> yeah, I'm a you turn twos into tens. <laughs> But twos are nice because you just have more control over it. Um, you don't have to worry about like breathing heavy and getting a nice, like, you know, a thick line, which with tens, I feel like I almost have to like hold my breath while doing my thin lines. Okay, we have to let this dry. So let's work on our trees more while we let that dry. I'm gonna move that to the side. Okay, so like my sky is lightening up a lot. Is it too late to go back and darken these things up? Because I already put the mountains in. Like, I want this darker. It's not too too late to go in and add stuff. You just have to be really careful and work around those mountains. I'm going to leave it. You know okay. what? Okay. I'm going to trust myself. Okay. I'm going to leave it. Good job. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Okay. So, we're going back to our trees. With a two. I grabbed my two. If you want to try a 10, try a 10. Okay. You can totally do it with a 10. I know I'm asking a lot of questions. No, I love it. I'm channeling the audience. No, it's great. Can I leave this in here? Because I want to. Yeah. I don't. It wouldn't, okay. The reason why I usually don't leave it, with this big brush, it won't make a huge difference because this is a nice big brush. What it really makes a difference on is these little ones. Oh, if you yeah. leave these thin ones in water for a long time, that point is going to bend. So just out of habit, I usually try and like when I'm done using it, I don't have to clean it. I just kind of put it off to the side. And then that way I'm just not in the habit of leaving brushes in my cup. Okay. If you leave them in your cup and you have small little ones, it's going to bend them. And if you leave any brush in a water for a long time, it's not good for them. It degrades the glue that holds the bristles together, all of that stuff. So um, yeah, excellent question. Okay. So I'm going to just use the back of this since this is scratch paper. I'm going to start with my tree again. Okay. I'm going to do my trunk here. That one I started from the top. It's a little bit thicker, but that's okay. Maybe I'll do another one. And you see that sometimes when I'm doing thin lines, I get these areas where I kind of miss the paper. I leave them. It's not a big deal. And we're most likely gonna cover them up with little bristles anyway, so. Okay, and then I'm gonna start putting in my branches here. And remember to start kind of narrow. And then as we go down, they're gonna get wider. Because we want our tree to have a triangular shape. And then as I put in my dashes, like this top part I'm not gonna like leave like totally ignore. I'm gonna put just a couple little dashes on there. So people can tell there's a little bit there, but not a lot. And then I'm just gonna start working my way down, doing dashes across, and remember to let them kind of thin out as they get to the side. Another thing to remember is when you're at the top of the tree, it's okay if your dashes are smaller. And then when we get to the bottom, it's okay if they get bigger. We got a New Mexico. Oh, and hello, uh, New Mexico. Baby's calling for the number 10. The number 10 brush in the next month's subscription box or something. Oh, like on the add-on kit? That's a good idea. Good idea, Debbie. I need another branch here. Yeah. Oh, another thing. Okay, this is misleading to you, and I'm sorry, but you see that I'm doing these branches, and I'm don't only doing them on one side. I don't only paint them on one side, I still do the other side. I just don't like putting them all the way across. I don't know why I'm that way. Here, I'll make this better. <laughs> like that. So you see how you kind of just sit them on one side there? Do them, do them all the way across. Michael, do trees have, do trees have branches on both sides? <laughs> I'm Missouri trees. <laughs> and then I'm going to put a little like dashes on my trunk here and there. It doesn't have to be like, the thing you have to remember is like things are way more random that you, than you might think they are. It's not like I'm going across this trunk and being like, here, here are little branches, right? 
That's what we think we have to do. It's not like that. It's more like, oh, there's a little clump here. Okay, I'm going to put stuff there. And here's a little cl clump there. YouTube's just not noticing your blue fingertips. <laughs> Aren't they nice? <laughs> I really try to wash my hands before this. <laughs> And if you put your branches too far away and you're like, this is a like really thick, yeah, if they're looking too sparse, add some branches in later. Like I can add a little branch right here. Sparse, I'm so glad you're here so you can help me with all these words. <laughs> and remember as you go down, let those, you're basically like, when you get towards the bottom here, you're, branches, the dashes are going to get bigger and a little bit more random. So it's basically going to look, if you look at our example here, you don't see clear sections. Things keep on running into each other. They're overlapping. So let them overlap because that's what we see in nature, right? Trees are in front of other trees. Branches are in front of other branches. So let them kind of like get in front of each other and get messy. Just try and keep the top part a little bit more clean so we can tell kind of what's going on. But like, as I get to my bottom branches here, they're gonna kinda overlap one another. So basically, I'm just doing large dashes. Make sure to leave some white spots in between, right? Because we still wanna let the light in. We wanna let the light in through these trees. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Okay, I thought I was making progress. But okay. I made a mistake. Let me show you what's going on here, my dear. Your dashes. Trees are not my jam. No, let me let me just tell you, because your dashes are like this. They look red in the shade. They're very on purpose. They're very thin. So if your dashes are getting too skinny, I want you to use the side of your brush more to get a thicker mark. Okay? Are oh, you putting actual chunks in there? Oh yeah, we're chunking. So like if this is my branch that I'm going off of. I was going with more of a cedar with the down branches. I love it. Keep that going. But if you do the down brushes. <laughs> it was on accident. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is great artistic choice. But just kind of do dashes across and let it thin out while it gets to the edge so the dashes get a little bit skinnier. But I feel like these are kind of more like this, right? You're using the, you're using the point of your brush to do these dashes. Mm -hmm. Use the side. Okay. So even practice dashes that look like that off your tree. They look like little shark teeth. That's what they're they are. They do look like shark teeth. All right. took my... So yeah, at the bottom, they're getting nice and thick. They're running into each other. It's chaos. It's mayhem. It's great. And you can even add a little bit of water in there too to make that paint go a little bit further. And I'm gonna add a little bit more to the top because my bottom's looking nice and full and now my top looks really sparse. They look like two different trees. So I'm just gonna add in a little bit of craziness, a little bit thicker lines. Yeah. Yeah, that looks good. The only thing I would say so I like how yours has a nice triangle shape. That's great. But the size of your dashes are the same that are on okay. the top and the okay. bottom. So you want to make sure that the dashes at the top, these are great, nice and thin little guys. But when you get to the bottom, look how thick these are. Okay. When you get to the bottom, let that go. Do some nice thick ones, okay? Because branches themselves are thicker at the bottom. The leaves are usually bigger because they've been there longer. There's more growth. So we want to kind of explain that. Okay. Okay, let's go back to our mountains. Grab your painting. We're going to put in our middle mountain. And you just want to keep in mind that this is our middle value. You want to make sure it's darker than the one that we put in, but not like super dark that you can't go. Because we have to do one more shade darker than that. Does that make sense? So I'm just going to mix some color here. I'm going to add a little bit of water to lighten it up. 
and then I'm just gonna start putting it in. You just wanna make sure, and you can tell right away, like, oh, this is darker than this area, that's good, this is a dark, this is a good dark for me. Just keep in mind that you still have to go one shade darker. So don't like put in black right now. And this one kind of runs into this first mountain. So I'm gonna go a little bit over the mountain so I can paint over it. And I'm adding water making sure it's wet. Now, this isn't a strong enough difference for me. This side's darker, this side almost looks the same, so I'm just gonna add another layer. Where do you get inspiration from? Uh, you, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> but really, like, you're just like, I feel like mountains today. Or what? Or this... Well, usually in every month, I try and almost have a rhythm where we do like, I want to do a landscape or like a sky. Um, I want to do an animal. I want to do something loose, like a floral maybe or feathers. Like I want to like have an array in the box. So I try and just hit those things. I have an animal. I have a sky. I have, you know, loose leaves or something. Fascinating. So interesting, isn't it? Okay. So this is dark. It's darker than the one I put in. It's a nice even color. Or I guess I should say value. I would darken yours up just a little bit. That looks great. You can add a little bit of like edges to yours if it's looking too smooth and rounded. I'm gonna put some here and there. Just like that. And then we let it dry. Can we do like a water change? Yeah. Yeah, we can do a water change. We could also do a check in. Let's do a check in and then a water change. Do her first. Okay. Okay, this was looking great. We can easily tell that this mountain is darker than this mountain. We have a nice sharp line, nothing is bleeding through. So we can tell that this is in front of this area. It looks really great. You just wanna make sure that the next mountain is darker. And what I would even suggest maybe is letting this top mountain kind of go up that okay. way. Okay. Oh, I smeared that a little, sorry. So kind of go up in front of it. And then that will for sure tell our viewer that this front mountain is cutting off this mountain. It's in okay. front of it. Okay. Okay. Yep, this looks great. I'm painting in some like... Oh, I love it, like shadows like or like ridges. That's great. So he's putting in a little bit of ridges, textures here. If you want to do that in your own painting, feel free to. It's usually just an extra swipe with a little bit of color and to get some um, textures in there. I would... I would even maybe go a tiny bit darker on this top part, top okay. part, just a little bit, but I really like the silhouette of your mountains here. They look really good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll switch out water. Do you want me to take yours, my dear? Or are you using it? Just checking the team. I mean, that song ruined my life, that like crazy song, but before that. Wait, what do you say? Sue says your motto should be just like that. What? Just like that. Oh, yeah, that is good, Sue. Just like that. I need the water. Here. I've been trying to blend with lighter shade. Here, here, here. Argentina? What? We have someone from Argentina? 
What time is it? Welco. Yeah, what time is it even there? Probably in a similar time zone. We've got Puerto Rico, New Mexico. I mean, New Mexico has an Argentine vibe to it. It sounds exotic. <laughs> no, I've driven through it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mine. Is yours, guys, is still wet? Yes. Okay. We'll practice our trees one more time. Well, we'll have one more opportunity before we do the trees. But I'm going to add another tree to this. So this is, I'm going to, I'm going to show you what you are thinking you might want to do with trees. And I'm going to tell you, don't do this. When you think of trees and you're doing a landscape, you almost put them like in a line right next to each other. Like this, right? And you like do your branches. But they're all the same size and they're all perfectly next to each other and none of them overlap because this is like organized, right? That's an orchard. Yeah, but we're not painting an orchard. We're painting a wild landscape, okay? So our trees are gonna overlap. They're gonna be different heights because they're you know, farther or closer away from us or maybe they're baby trees. So when you add your next tree, I don't want you to go so far away that the leaves won't touch. I want you to get close enough to where they are gonna run into each other and I want you to do different heights. So I'm gonna do my next tree. It's gonna be shorter. And I'm gonna start putting in my branches. And remember to let them get out wide as you go down. Here's and Bob Ross say happy little trees. Happy little trees. Happy little tree. We're channeling some Bob Ross right now. Oh, Bobby. We miss you, Bobby. Did he go by Bobby? No. I, don't, I don't feel like he did. <laughs> he did to me. <laughs> it was Robert. <laughs> Robert. Robert. He's like, call me Robert. Okay, so I'm doing my dashes. I let them get a little bit thinner as I go out to the edge of my branches. Remember to do a couple random ones on the trunk too. And remember to use the side of your brush to do dashes, not the tip. And then as you go down your tree, your, your dashes are going to get thicker. That just means you basically like push harder on your brush. And then as you can see, now that I'm getting towards the bottom, they're running into each other, my trees. That's exactly what we want. We want them to overlap. When you paint at home, do you paint with like music on or what do you do? I do. I paint with music or a podcast or whatever my kids are watching because sometimes I got to work and I have my children. So we watch a little movie and I paint. Okay, so my trees are starting to run into each other. This is great. This is good. We want them to run into each other. Let it get messy because that's how it is. If you go out into a forest, the trees overlap, they run in, you almost lose track of what belongs to what. So that's what we're kind of communicating here. These trees are a little bit wild. How do you feel? So good. Good. I want your branches to be a little bit closer together. I'm noticing that as well. Yeah, I think there's a little bit too much. I'm glad we're doing practices because I'd be bummed out if <laughs> I did that on this. This is why scratch papers are nice. So your branch is here. So if this is my trunk that I'm, let's say I'm going to use this trunk right here. When you do your branches, let them be closer together. Okay. It's the laziness in me coming out. Like, <laughs> if I put in four branches. I have to put leaves on all those. So let them, and I like, I can tell already that your dashes are getting better on this tree. Practice. Excellent. <laughs> So kind of let them Well, there's so many lines going on that I honestly lost track of where my trunk is. But we it's just going to make it look more full. So add a little bit more branches in there, add a lip, add some more dashes. How are you doing over there? Oh, that looks great. Okay. 
So you can tell, so this was her first tree, and then with the second one, she let her dashes get thicker down here, mm -hmm. and this tree already looks a little bit more natural, right? It has that nice shape, it's nice and full at the bottom, and we still have some nice delicate ones on top. Another thing that I would maybe suggest is, um, when we do our trees, and we do the cross branches, I know that we kind of want to stay to where all the dashes are even, right? Uh -huh. but they're going to be a little bit more full at the bottom, like in the middle, I mean. So if you look at mine, they're almost like full and then they get, they kind of go out. So they almost have this kind of shape to them. Does that make sense? So it's like thicker and then it thins out. So even the dashes themselves within the branch are not the same size. See how okay. that one's short okay. and that one's longer? Yeah. So that's what you want to keep in mind. We don't want to do the same like that across because we want to show this thing goes at us and out of the tree. Okay. So that's why we let them be a little bit longer in the middle and kind of thin out at the sides. <coughs> See how this is reading more of a branch than that one? Mm -hmm. Oh, Ella's on. Hi, Ella. Not our Ella, Ella French. Hi, Ella French. She says it's so great to see such familiar faces. I hope Willow is doing well. We miss her. And sleeping. I do hope she's sleeping. Okay, let's move on to our last mountain. Now our last mountain, this is gonna be our darkest mountain. This is gonna be our deep brooding mountain that we have here. Okay. I'm gonna grab a little bit more blue for us. Basically, if you want a thicker or stronger color, you just grab more paint. So we're gonna be picking up a lot of paint. I'm gonna mix a tiny bit of black in there, but I want a nice strong color, so I'm gonna have lots of paint in my paintbrush, and then I'm just gonna kinda of work my way across. Sounds like Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds outside. <laughs> birds are going crazy. Okay, the other thing you wanna keep in mind with this mountain is we don't want the mountain to be black. So don't use pure black for this mountain because that's our trees and we actually want our trees to be the darkest part on this painting. So is this looking too dark then? I, I would lighten it up just a little. So the funny thing with this is like the, the value of the other mountain is going to inform the value of this mountain. So can I actually uh -huh. move yours yeah. to show? So um, Kelly put down this color. It's a nice dark color, right? But it almost looks too dark mm -hmm. compared to the other two, which was a great thing to notice. So she's going to lighten that up a little bit so they still feel like from the same like picture um, like we don't want it to be so just jointed by how dark this one is compared to the others. So just kind of take a look and take a, f like figure out the feel. Sometimes I talk and I'm like, do people even know <laughs> what I'm saying? I get it. You get what I'm saying? We don't want it to be so dark that it looks disjointed from the other mountains. They're made of the same rocks. They're made of the same rocks. They're taken at the same time. The picture, I mean. <laughs> Ooh, I hope I'm making sense. Okay. So I put in my dark. So it's dark, but it's not so dark that it looks completely disjointed from the other mountains. Yep. Yes, that looks great. Thank you. Both of them look fantastic. I love it. I'm gonna add a little, I'm gonna add a little extra like texture to mine. So this closest mountain, this one can have the most detail in terms of the outline because it's closest to us. So we would most likely see these little things that kind of stick out here and there. The farther one, not so much, right? Because as it gets farther, those things tend to smooth out a little bit. But the ones that are closest to us, we can notice like a little rock formation coming out there. It's a little, a little bit more jagged, maybe. Like that. Is that still too dark? 
No, it's not too dark. I would leave that. I think that's great. And then we wait for that to dry. And then as soon as that dries, we put in our trees. Sometimes it's a little bit of a waiting game, watercolor. I have a fun fact. Okay. My botany teacher told me that when you look out on a landscape such as this, mm -hmm. you see this blue colored hue, mm -hmm. those are called tannins and trees release that. Really? I don't know. It's what like is a, it? It's like just a chemical that plants make. Sometimes oh. it's like a, it's a bitter protectant so bugs don't eat them, I guess. Okay, interesting. But, uh, yeah, like sometimes when you look over the valley and you're like, it's really smoggy down there. It's actually just tree tannins. But I don't know. <laughs> but it's been pulling my leg. <laughs> I like it. I, I'm going to go ahead and say that that's true. Okay. And I love it. Well, if you say it's true. Then it is true. It's true. Trust me more than your botany teacher. Botany teacher. Your professor. <sighs> okay. If you want to have one more practice with your trees before you put them in, now is the time. I'll go over it one more time so you guys can kind of see. But the whole point is we want to make sure it's dry before we put in our trees. Because if your mountain is wet and we try and put in a black tree, that black is just going to go everywhere. Sue's on. Hi, Sue. Mom, you can say hi to her. Hi, Sue. Well, you can say to the <laughs> hi, camera. <Sue. laughs> and Ella. Okay. And Andrew. And Andrew and Willow. All right, and let's Willow. get all the Wileys. All right, right, let's get all the Wileys. Walt, hi. <laughs> Okay, I'm starting with my trunk again. I'm just, I'm just gonna do my trunk line nice and thin. I'm gonna make a 10 trunk. Okay, it's I love it. It's, not gonna go well. it's gonna go great. Have faith in yourself, my love. Okay, and then I'm gonna put in my branches. I'm just lightly putting them in here and there. Remember they get um, wider as we go down because what I want our trees to have that nice triangular shape. If you want your tree to seem more full, put your branches together. If you want them to seem more sparse, spread them apart more. When we're at the top, we're just doing tiny little dashes, kind of here and there. And then we go across our branches. And remember that the middle of your branch, your little dashes are gonna be a little bit longer. And kind of just move across here. And sometimes I like to go up and add a little few dashes across the trunk um, so it's not just like a super thin line. How are you feeling with the 10? Harder than I thought. Okay. You know, I decided I like kind of like a sloppy tree. Yeah. Like I like this feel. Yeah, I do too. It looks great. All right. So I'm doing my trees. I'm really just working across the branch. Yours are so good. Hey, we're not comparing. Oh, yeah, that's right. We're. I'm complimenting. Okay, okay, okay. I'm angrily complimenting. <laughs> you. Well, constructively criticizing my own. <laughs> just, just remember that a lot of this is just practice. It's like. How many trees have I painted in my life? I couldn't even count. If this is your third tree, be a little nice to yourself, right? Coming up hot on like 10. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm working across. I'm kind of letting my dashes get a little bit more hectic. I'm kind of doing almost crisscross a little bit. I don't want to do that too much to where it kind of takes over my painting, but it's okay to introduce a different direction here and there. And then I feel like my branches actually got a little bit too far apart down here, so I'm gonna... What was that? That's the microphone receiver. <laughs> so I'm just gonna move my branches a little bit closer together towards the bottom. I'm working my way across. How are your trees? How do you feel about them? I like them. Yeah, yeah, they're looking good. Yeah, trying to make them a little fuller in the bottom. But don't lose your narrow top. Yeah. You want to make sure you still have that nice thin top. I'm like anxious. I think I'm ready. You ready? I feel like you're like itching to go. Well, you're I'm ready. Top because I like really like this part. 
So I'm like, okay, this is an excellent point to bring up because I felt this way before where you you're painting something and you love it so far and you're so scared to put something down because you don't want to ruin it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I've totally felt yeah. that way before. Here's the thing that you got to remember. This is what you can do. Maybe you love this so much that it can be on its own and it's done and it's fine. What you want to do is you want to finish it because if it doesn't look finished, then what's the point of keeping it? You know what I mean? Like this one, it's different because this could probably stand on its own and it can feel complete. Right. You're but nice. in other circumstances, like when we're doing like a floral bouquet and we put in a couple flowers and we love it so much, we don't want to add anything to it because we're scared. Um, then it's just going to be an empty painting. And I think finished is better than perfect. Right. I've heard that somewhere. I <laughs> might have taken it from someone who says that. Feeling Jake, are you Jenny familiar with that? Jenny You've never Jenny. heard of it. <laughs> Jenny never. Doan. I, I don't know. Something. <laughs> But don't Jenny don't that's it <laughs> Jenny don't tiny company the Missouri Star <laughs> but she says that all the time finish is better than perfect which which is exactly true it has to be completed and maybe you put it in and you don't like the trees paint another one it's just paint it's just paint on a paper it's just marks so don't stress out I know it's stressful but trust me the more you do it the more you're okay with making a mistake I'm strategically planning where to put my trees on my okay. least favorite part. Genius. Like right here, I don't yes. love, so I'm gonna have a big old. Yes, that's great. I do that all the pine. time. Okay. I do that all the time. You can cover up mistakes. It's a great thing to do sometimes. Oh, I got a little color in there. That's okay. So I'm gonna put in my tree. I'm using my two. You guys ready for this? This is the moment. This is the moment. <laughs> I like to start off center always. If I put a big tree right in the middle of this painting, it's gonna throw my composition way off. So, does she need to scooch in closer, Jake? Uh, fix it in. Just... You good? Okay. So I'm gonna like go off to the right a little bit so I'm not right in the middle. And then I'm going to put in my tree and I'm gonna actually have it go taller than my mountain. So I'm gonna like put in my trunk, I'm going up. I skipped a part, that's okay. Branches are gonna cover it. Okay, there's my first tree. <sighs> I did it? Okay. You so guys can do it? For the person out there yeah. who does this and yeah. immediately goes like, oh no, that's not right. Is okay. black something that like that you're just sticking with it? Or is this liftable with, with... Here's the thing, because we are doing a landscape with layers, it would be very difficult to lift anything because it's gonna lift anything behind it. Okay. I just saved okay. your painting. So, <laughs> no, you just scared them more. No, just just go for it, have confidence. Just go, because you just have to remember, this is not life or death, right? Yeah, yes, yes, you got it. You did it. <laughs> that was nerve wracking. Okay, I know it's scary, but we can do this. We'll get through this. Okay, I'm gonna start putting in my branches. And remember to stay narrow at the top and get more wide as you go down. Now these, these branches that I'm putting in here, it's more like, uh, almost like a guideline for you to put your like dash marks. If they're not helpful for you and you don't like doing this part, don't do them, it's not a big deal. This is just like a reminder for me to be like, Oh yeah, branch goes here, leaves go here. Okay, I put in my branches. Now I'm gonna start putting in my little leaf textures. So I'm using the side of my brush. I'm leaving the top like very narrow. I didn't even touch the very top of my tree. That's still my trunk. I just left that there. And then I'm gonna start kind of going down across my tree. Now I might have put too much space in between my branches here. So I'm gonna add a couple um, branches in between because that's just too much space for me. I want it to seem more full. And remember to kind of let your branches be thick in the middle and thin out when it gets to the side. Ooh, it's hot in here. I was just going to say, we turn the air conditioner off so you don't hear it. Yeah. I was just going to say, do you think in the winter time we're just going to freeze? Yes. <laughs> okay. The things we do. The things we do. 
For art. For art. Worth it. Yeah, those look great. How are you feeling, dear? I find like I do the best branches if I just kind of close my eyes and wiggle my brush. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Honestly, a lot of watercolor is just like loose, like random stuff. <laughs> I close my eyes and wiggle my brush. <laughs> I think that shouldn't work, but it does. It does. Honestly, branches are best when you're not thinking about them too hard. When you're kind of just like, here's one, here's some dashes. They get thicker in the middle. It's fine. Not a big deal. And now I'm, that I'm getting to the bottom of my tree, my dashes are getting bigger. My tree's looking a little too uniform for me. So I'm just gonna like fill in some places here and there so it's not super rhythmic. That's just me though. That doesn't, if you like the way that looks, then keep it. I don't think that that's like an art technique. I think that's just me and my personal preferences. And now that I'm getting towards the bottom, my dashes are getting thicker. They're kind of running into each other more. They're overlapping with other branches. Getting a little bit more crazy. Let your, yeah, let your dashes get a little bit thicker. Yep. And remember to go all the way down to the bottom of your circle. Okay. I put in my first tree. I feel good. Another thing that you can do is you can almost just take your brush and do a couple just horizontal dashes like straight across almost. That just kind of might fill in your tree a little bit more. Okay. And um, like in some areas, I'm still feeling my, like my tree looks a little sparse, but because I'm adding more trees right next to it, I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I'm just gonna keep adding my trees. So I'm gonna do another one to the right. And this one's gonna be smaller. I'm, I'm kind of moving on the other side of my paper so I could do a straighter line, because it's easier for me to go horizontal and do a straight line than to go vertical. So I'm kind of moving my arm around if my thing wasn't taped down, I would just turn it. So I'm gonna do a straight line going up. This one's gonna be smaller or shorter, I guess. So I have my trunk. I like the 10 because I felt like it just held so much more paint. Like I feel like I'm just constantly dipping this one. Yeah. Yeah, the 10 definitely has like a bigger body. So you can um, exactly hold more paint, hold more water. You shouldn't be using yeah. any water on these trees? No, you like can use, black. well, here's the thing with watercolor is you can't, you have to use a little bit of water so the, the leaves themselves go smoothly on your paper. If you're starting to get like a rough texture, like um, where it starts to, see how I'm starting to get like an edge mm. like that? We don't want that. That means you don't have enough water on your brush. So you want enough water to where you can make a smooth mark so I'm always dipping my brush first and then I'm picking up that black. So this one I didn't put my branches in first. I kind of just made the decision as I painted. I don't think there's a right way or a wrong way. I think it's just a preference. And it's starting to kind of run into the other tree. That's okay, we embrace that, we love it. We want the trees to be friends. Yep, that looks good. 
Okay, now I'm going to do another tree on the other side. And you can do as many trees that feels right for you. So I think I did four in this painting. Just, just try and make sure that they're different heights. Okay, I'm actually gonna just tape this around so I can move that. I'm gonna do a little bit shorter of a tree. Like that. My trunk's a little crooked, but that's okay. Try and keep it straight if you can. If you can't, it's not the end of the world. So I have to tell you, one of my favorite things to do is after we paint on Tuesday evenings to be able to go back and um, paint it again and practice. Oh, yeah. And a good idea because the more you practice the more you do this the more comfortable you're gonna feel um, which means that you're willing to kind of take chances you're okay to make mistakes because a lot of times like look I have a colored dot in my sky right that's a little bit of a mistake but because I've been painting so long it's like it's fine like first of all most people aren't gonna notice it and for and if you show someone it's not gonna be like there is a little spot in your sky. Nobody's gonna do that. They're so excited for you. So it's, it's just one of those things where you learn to let things go and you just get, you just get better. You get used to you know, making different marks and how much paint you need to have in your brush and how much water you need to pick up. You just kind of get used to it. I've kind of gone for a dot technique. Okay, you like that? Well, I did branches and they just looked very like... Uh -huh. So I just kind of went around and started like dotting them. Yeah. I think it kind of has a nice... Yeah, I like it. You, get, you have some nice texture going on. Okay, my tree got real crooked here. What can I do? Which one? This one. See how it leaned up a little bit? Yeah, some trees are crooked. It's true to form. Some trees are crooked. Good thinking, Jake. Maybe I'll put... Um, I'm wondering if I can almost straighten it out a little bit, if I make it a little bit taller. She so said, what's okay. the best way to add items to the description box and try baby wipes to get paint off? What's the best way to add items to a subscription box? Oh. That's an excellent idea. I don't, I wish Al was here because he knows the answer to add. If you want to um, add items to your subscription box, uh, for right now, since we're doing packaging, you can just um, order those items and I'll just put it in your subscription box when I package it all up. Um, actually, Faye, wait, who asked that? Faye? Judy, Judy, let me actually ask Al and I'll message you back tonight on how to do that because that's an excellent question that I'm not totally positive on. I'm sure there's a way. Sarah, look. Yeah. I did a tiny bird on top. Oh, I love it. It's cute. It's giant by comparison. You see it. You see it. It's going to be an eagle. Should I bring it over? Are you going to make it bigger? No. Is that what you said? No, it's big because it's far away. Oh, yeah. Okay. Here's Michael's little bird on the top of this tree. It's good. Wait one sec. Okay. Go inside, Cam. Can they see it? It's right here. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of looks like leaves. He's a rare leaf bird. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do one more little tree over here on this left-hand side. Just a little guy. Another thing you kind of want to keep in mind is when you're adding stuff on top, you s like try not to have any of your trees line up with the exact line on your mountains. You know what I mean? You either want them to be above it or below it. 
because sometimes that can just kind of throw our eye off a little bit. With mine, I noticed as I was going, it was going to be right at the peak. Yeah. Yeah. Layer. And when you just when you line it up, it's true if you actually see in photos also, like if you've taken a photography class, you don't want um, things to kind of line up exactly if they're not part of the same, if they're in different fields of depth, um, because it just communicates to our viewer, you know, where things are in the in the picture. Look at that. We teach art and photography. My photography teacher is always like, don't do this unless that's what you're doing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, unless you're like choosing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hated that. Don't, I feel like I say that. Yeah, don't do this rules. unless you like it. Right. Yeah, know the rules to break the know rules. Know the rules to break the rules. Okay, this tree is going to be a little bit more full, so I'm kind of being really, um, I don't want to say vigorous, but. Liberal. Liberal. Man, you were coming in clutch today. <laughs> Being really liberal with my brush strokes, with my dashes. Not really Scrabble against this guy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I've ever played Scrabble. It's such a shame. I'm not like a board game. Type He's not a game thing. player, and it breaks my heart every day. Okay. Okay. I got my trees. I'm feeling good. I think I actually might add a little one in between here. The spacing on these three is too even for me personally. <laughs> I'm like fine with four. That's okay, right? Yeah. Right. If you're fine with it, you're fine with it. It's your painting. I feel like every time I start a new tree, I'm just taking a gamble. And you know what? I kind of got through these four, so <laughs> like, we're calling it there. <laughs> Maybe five. You know what? We'll count this little one. I got five trees. Okay, I like it. You can't see this one super bad, but it just adds, it just kind of fills in that, that space right there. Yeah, looks great. I'm not sure where I should, if I should go right here. I wouldn't do one over there. Kind of I would leave that or do another one over here. Okay. But I think that looks good. Okay. Mine probably covered the front of mine a little bit too much, but that's fine. I'm just adding random. I think, I think we're done. Are you done, Mom? I could, I can be. Okay, yes, cool. I can be. Let's show everybody. <laughs> Should we hold them up, Jake? Yeah, for sure. Okay, untape it carefully. Uh, Did it rip a little bit? See right there. Yeah, yeah. If it's too much, get some fuzzies on there. Here. Is it better to have an odd number of trees, or does it matter? Um, usually, aesthetically, it's pleasing to have odd numbers. However, um, it also just depends on how it f looks in the painting. So in, in this one that I have here, I have four numbers of trees. And even though that's an even number, I still like how this feels. It feels good. So um, it really, it's just about that. But in other things, like when I do um, like bouquets or something, I'll have odd numbers. Okay. All right, what are we doing with these? Hold them up towards Hold on, Maine. Maine. Okay. And then I'll have you turn them this way. Okay. Here's here's right. our paintings. Yay! Okay, now turn towards turn, you. Turn them. Yeah, I'm gonna just go slow down. Okay. <laughs> Let me make sure that switched. The iPad was. Oh, you're locked out of the iPad. Oh, yeah, we're good. Here we go. Okay. Can Maybe you see my not. face? No, but you're doing us. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing this. Good job, you guys. Yay. They look awesome. I love doing these because every time I'm like, there's no way I can get through this. And then at the end, I'm like, yes. Yes. <laughs> I painted something. Okay. If you painted tonight, I'm so proud of you. I want to see it. So post it. If you're watching on Facebook, you can just go ahead and post it in the comments. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, then you can tag us on Instagram if you have an Instagram. Our Instagram name is Let's Go Make Art. So just go ahead and tag us in that. The hashtag for this project is Sunset Mountains. So um, share your work. We want to see it. We want to comment on it. We want a creative community where we can, you know, talk about each other's artwork and, you know, like give compliments and all of those things. So um, please do that. Be brave. You can do it. I know it's scary, but you got it. I mean, you painted this picture. Um, next week, 
we are actually painting on Tuesday night. We're going to be painting our postcard for our let's make art matter. Um, so we're actually going to be, remember it's your postcard. You can paint whatever you want on it to send What's them. Let's make art matter for people who don't know. Let's Make Art Matter is, if you're in our subscription, we do a postcard, we choose an individual or a family or really just somebody or a group of people who need a little cheering up or you know a little support. So we send you a postcard that's pre-addressed and pre-stamped. We paint a picture and all you have to do is drop it in the mail. So that's what we're gonna be doing in our next live on Tuesday night. And we're gonna be doing this scene on the postcard. So have that ready. Um, or if you wanna paint something else, please feel free to do so. Um, and you can still kind of come and hang out with us and talk with us. I think, oh, and this is the last week to subscribe to our August box. We're getting those packaged and put together. So if you haven't subscribed to our box yet, now is the time, August is gonna be awesome. So I think that's everything. What are we doing next week? The postcard, the Let's Make Art Matter. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just <laughs> said it. <That's> <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye you guys, bye. thank you.